Fawad Khan gets his first setback in Bollywood. Ranbir's Jagga Jasus is delayed further. Will it ever see the light of day? Salman's got a lucky charm which he wore to his court hearings. Hey guys, it's Wednesday and I'm Caitlin here with another episode of 9xe.com the show. I'm hot, you're not. I'm a superstar. I'm a superstar. like the newest Khan in Bollywood is having a bit of a tough time. I'm talking about hottie from across the border, Fawad Khan. Fawad is just about finding his footing in big bad Bollywood and now it looks like he has slipped and fallen. Buzzes, his film based on Anuja Chauhan's book Battle for Vitora along with Sonam Kapoor has hit a roadblock. Sonam's sister, producer Ria and director Shashanka Ghosh are having serious creative differences over this film. Ria has decided not to go ahead with the film until Shashanka and she are on the same page. Clearly, Ria is taking no chances when it comes to her next venture after Koop Surat which fell flat at the box office. So now Fawad's next project has an uncertain future. Sure, he's just begun shooting for Kapoor and Sons along with Siddharth Malhotra and Alia Bhatt and he's also got a cameo in Karan Johar's E Dil Hai Mushkil and possibly even the remake of Ram Lakhan. But this is his first taste of a setback and it has hit him hard because he has learned early on that in Bollywood you win some and you lose some. Welcome to Bollywood Mr Khan. But here's someone who has been through the grind in Bollywood and has lived to tell the tale. Bombay Velvet is Anurag Kashyap's most ambitious project till date. Last week, Anurag was told that Bombay Velvet would not get a UA certificate because the theme was too heavy on crime. Now this is the first Bollywood movie to be heavy on crime. It seems the two parties have now agreed to a middle path. So why have the scissors come down on this particular kiss, which is nothing but an expression of love? We wonder if there are different rules for different stars and different eras. And is the new censor board led by Pehlaj Nihalani right in thinking that kissing is a taboo? Or is it being simply regressive? We hit the streets to know what you think about the censor board's attitude towards on-screen intimacy. Uh, I think if the story requires it, then I don't think there is any problem in it. But sometimes it's just like for no reason, everyone's just into their mouths. Cool enough. I think it should be open to people also. It's better that uh, let it go with the flow. Let people also get educated that this is something not, you know, uh, dirty. It can be done in a. It can be seen in a good way as well. I think to an extent is fine. It shouldn't be like them chop off, you know, because it's it's a wall. You know, everything goes on in every wall. In India, it's not so much. But if you go abroad and all, it's a common thing. And now children also act for it. I think it's pretty much normal nowadays. Like the youth is well aware about it since there is sex ed in all schools and colleges also basically. So it, everyone is aware that all these all these things do take place in movies. I'd like to see more of them because it's an open uh, gesture of affection. As long as they're not very um, long and all, that's fine. <laughs> Basically, in Bollywood, mein toh, kissing scenes are normal. So I don't think so. there's a problem to chop off a kissing scene in a movie. So I don't think there's any need of, for the censor board to you know, cut it off from a movie or anything. movie, there's a kissing scene in a movie. So, to chop it off for it, especially not, I don't think so, that it should be. Maximum 90 to 95 percent of movies, there are kissing scenes in movies. It's not like that, 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 it's not like that. I think it's like that, that everything is available on the internet. So, if it doesn't come to Bollywood, then we'll Google it and we'll get everything. So it's better that if you have to show such scenes, then you can see a certificate movie. I don't think so. There is any need for them to interfere. In fact, they should be really doing something which is actually happening. Like, why don't they just take care of something else instead of this? This is a stupid topic to even talk about. The new generation which is coming up, they know it. And there is sex education going on in every school. So it's okay to have it. 
the scene needs it, a short one is fine, but definitely not a long one. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> if it's supposed to be a script, I think it's okay. Kissing movie, we don't want to see with the children. I think if it's entertaining, it's fine, because it's eventually an individual's choice. The plot is good enough, I'll, I'll launch it anyways. See, as per Indian culture, we can't, with family, we can't see that scenes. What's your take on the censor board's decision of on-screen intimacy? Tweet us at 9xeetheshow using hashtag censorship or dictatorship. Or talk to us at facebook.com slash 9xe. So Bombay Velvet might have survived with just one bruise, but it seems there is fresh trouble with the censor board. Ninexi.com has it that the censor board member Nandini Sardesai is miffed with the censor board chief Pehelaj Nihilani having exceeded his brief. Being indulgent by nature, Pehelaj took it upon himself to sit for the Bombay Velvet revising screening and pass the movie with the cuts, and did not invite Nandini to the same despite her calling him up personally to express her availability. An infuriated Nandini has now contacted the top bosses and the Information and Broadcasting Ministry, informing them of this situation. In a frank conversation with 9xe.com the show, Nandini even branded Pehelaj a megalomaniac. Now that is a strong word. That is really now, you know, become like what you call a megalomaniac. Where you think that I am the only person that I know everything and I can do no wrong. Nandini also said that there was no interaction within the censor board. This is what she had to say about Pehlaj. The man overriding everything. So being liberal for me has become a crime now. It's a crime that I've committed by being liberal. I was a Czech person. He's, 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 he thinks he's doing a modern policing job. He's going, moving up, back, uh, forward, he's going regressing. For him, it's his rule, nobody else's rule. It's Mr. Dailani's rule, it's not a board, it's not TPFP, it's not IB Ministry, it's Mr. Dailani. You're, you're treating the filmmaker like dirt. You can't do this. Nandini said the only time a chairperson can sit on the revising committee was under extraordinary circumstances. We got in touch with Bailaj Nihilani as well to get his side of the story. He did not have much to say except... My right to decide who will see the picture. Ah. Last year, ex censor board chief Rakesh Kumar was arrested on bribery charges, while Leela Sampson quit the board over the movie MSG The Messenger. We wonder how the censor board will tide over this new crisis. And there's more trouble for Ranbir Kapoor. We've got that story just after this break. Coming up, Ranbir's Jagga Jasus is in trouble once again. This is 9xe.com The Show with me, Caitlin. So before we went for a break, we told you we've got some more dope on Ranbir Kapoor, and here it is. After much back and forth, his Bombay Velvet hits theatres two days from now. But looks like the nightmare for Ranbir is not over just as yet. That's because his co-production with Anurag Basu, Jagga Jasus, has been postponed yet again. For those of you who are keeping count, that's the third time the film's release date has been pushed. Jagga Jasus with Ranbir and girlfriend Katrina Kaif in the lead was first supposed to be released in November 2014. Then it was pushed to March 2015 and then to November 2015. Now the plan is to release the film in June 2016. That's almost a year and a half after its original release date. Yikes! A few episodes ago, 9xe.com The Show told you that Jagga Jasus has been delayed yet again because a major portion of the film has to be reshot. This is because the dialogues were initially set to music and were to be said in verse form. But after a fair bit of it was shot, Ranbir was not happy with it. The new release date of 3rd June 2016 might pose another problem for Jagga Jasus because the other Ranbir star, Karan Johar's E Dil Hai Mushkil, is also slated to release on the same day. So who's going to blink first, Karan or Anurag? Will Jagga Jasus be postponed for the fourth time? Watch this space for more. A few weeks ago, tragedy struck Nepal. A devastating earthquake hit the country and over 8,000 people lost their lives. 
This tragic event has deeply affected Manisha Koirala, who is a native of Nepal and whose family has fortunately survived the disaster. Now she has taken up the cause of rehabilitating the affected and she knows a thing or two about surviving personal tragedy. After all, she has fought cancer and has emerged stronger than ever. 9xc.com spoke to her about her work in Nepal and she also shed some light on her plans to return to films. I was in uh, Bangalore uh, shooting for my film Game and a friend of mine who was in Nepal, uh, Shiba Shah, she actually messaged me, WhatsApp me that there was a big earthquake in Nepal. I immediately called mom and she, the first thing she said was, we are fine. After the initial shock and after the relief that my family at least was fine, then it really sank in that what a maximum amount of damage and so many lives have been lost and so many people and uh, you know have been <coughs> uprooted and completely you know their lives have been wiped out. My brother, my sister-in-law Yulia and my mom, everybody is in Nepal, my dad is in Nepal, everybody's in Nepal and they're doing their bit of going to the grounds and trying to do, you know, as much as possible. Uh, and um, I'm in Mumbai, I have met a couple of my colleagues, uh, my friends and my colleagues from uh, film industry and we are trying to do a lot of work. We And we are trying to, everybody, I am so, so moved with Everybody has extended their help and uh, I really feel, you know, this kind of a good wishes towards Nepal and its people will go along the way. Every day that I live, uh, I'm actually thankful that I'm alive, I'm here, I'm smiling and uh, I am living my dream. Uh, it's. It's been a lot, a lot has gone. Everybody knows about this. Uh, I've gone through a lot and people who I know who's been through similar kind of a journey, and they go through a lot. And after that certain experience, um, you know, a lot of shift that happens internally. And uh, trust me, it's, it's, it's been tough, but uh, I'm happy, you know, and it's over. And I'm looking forward for, uh, you know, for my, uh, my days ahead. I happened to meet a lot of my uh, colleagues uh, in last uh, six months, seven months, a year. Uh, after I came back from my treatment uh, from New York, um, I did meet a lot of my colleagues in, in a lot of function that I have attended, whether it's film fair or some screen awards or Sanjay Bansali's, uh, you know, birthday bash and a couple of other do's which I, I have attended. And also, uh, you know, my friends Urmila, Tabu, they all are in touch with me over the phone. We meet uh, for a cup of tea or coffee, we just hang together. So I feel uh, today the cinema is actually, uh, you know, uh, has changed towards uh, a betterment because uh, we have cinema which which deals in different category. We have art house cinema, which is equally uh, competent and can easily compete with the world cinema. And we have a commercial Bollywood set up cinemas as well, which is equally good and fun to do with. So. In my opinion, there is a, there is, you know, we don't have to have a typical format of a Bollywood which used to have earlier on. Now, cinemas are made for uh, in a small budget and issue oriented or anything, and these are uh, they earn money as well. Uh, I am an actor and I love cinema and I love acting, so. I think this will be part of my life till I die, till I live, uh, leave this earth. Uh, I think I will be part of cinema and I'll be part of acting. Uh, but in what format, I really don't know. It could be anything. It could be television, it could be theatre, it could be cinema. I am at present doing uh, cinemas. 
uh, but I'm open to things and lot, there, there has been consideration, there has been offers, so I am looking forward for doing that. Coming up, fine tuning with Neeti, Amitabh and Amit. <laughs> 9xe.com, the show, sat down with the trio that gave us the Bombay Velvet album. Neeti Mohan, the voice of Rosie Norona, Amitabh Bhattacharya, the lyricist, and Amit Trivedi, the music director. This is Fine Tuning with Neeti, Amitabh, and Amit. I'm the voice of Anushka Sharma in the film. She plays a jazz singer, a singer's character in the film. I have a lot of fun to be part of this soundtrack because I have a lot of fun. The best part is that I have a lot of fun to be a transition period, which was a lot of slow process of learning the songs, learning the music, and getting into the character of Rosie. It was a lot of fun. So, we met with Amitabh Bhattacharya, Amitji, we met with all of them for a workshop. We all had to be in that era. So we all went to Goa for eight days, and we only watched in those eight days only jazz films. Cabaret, Chicago. Jazz is very elite, and it listens to a very niche audience. So, yes, you keep it niche, you have to convert it into a Hindi jazz. It was very difficult and yet very interesting task for all of us. I told you the whole world that this is a film. I want to enter into the jazz world, which is like the 50s and 60s. Neeti came in on board because I had the reason one being I had seen her with her A.R. Rahman sir. She was doing a rendition of jazz. Her body language, the way she was singing, the way the way she had command on that song, which really sounded like low. Wow, she she sounds like a jazz singer. Her songs were different from me. I had to do acting in it. I had to do drama in it. So that. That's why they wanted me to do this, so they gave me a lot of advice to live with it. So I used to feel that I'm Rosie. I'm going to perform in the jazz club in the evening. So I lived like that for some time. Let's create this a night club. Let's make it a Bombay Velvet. So they gave me a lot of big studio. They put a table label and make a stage here. And I said, just go home, change. Look like a jazz singer. Look like Rosie. So I went home, I wore a cute long gown, heels, I came to make up and I made a full 60s look at home. Until I reached there, I had a whole studio club, dim lights and candles. And I had a table for four people on the table, which was wearing a suit and wearing a suit. How did they arrange it? And Amitabh Bhattacharya, the lyricist, he was sitting as a one of the lyricists on the table. And he was sitting as one of the lyricists on the table. Mostly, there are six songs that I have sung, they all talk about love. So, there are six songs that I have sung, they all talk about love. Mostly, there are six songs that I have sung, they all talk about love. But love has different expressions. In Bombay Velvet, although they might seem different, but apart from two songs, the rest of the songs mainly are about the various moods or the various shades of love. Coming up, where did Bipasha go wrong in her career? Salman wears his lucky charm to court. Find out what it is. And we meet again on 9xc.com, the show, where we've got a story on Bipasha Basu. The very hot, the very sultry, the very sad Bipasha Basu. Recently, news came out that Bipasha's Hollywood film, The Lovers, has gone straight to DVD. Oh no, this means that the film will not get a release in the theatres, which is code for the production house not thinking that the film is worth it. And who even buys DVDs these days, right? Add this to the news that 9xc.com has recently learned. Vipasha has walked out on the only film she had. This was Vikram Fadnis's movie, Nia. Vipasha chose not to do the film since the producers changed. Now Vashu Bagnani has come on board. While Bipasha surely has no issues with Vashu himself, she does have bad memories of hamshakals that he produced. Now, Vidya Balan is being considered for this role. This is yet another blow to Bipasha's already beaten career. Think back to Bipasha's last performance that really stuck with you. Nope, not that one. Not that. Surely not this one. Isn't it sad that neither of her last three films have been impressive? We only have bad memories of her last few films. It's super sad that her career is going nowhere soon. She's been left all alone in the big bad world of Bollywood. See what I did there? Alone and alone, get it? So what's gone wrong? 
Bipasha showed so much promise when she first came into the industry. She started off in the multi-sara Ajnabi, where she first showed us glimpses of the sexy star she was to become. She played up her oomph factor in films like Raz and Jism and carved a niche for herself as the actor who was bringing sexy back. It also worked for her because in the early 2000s, a lot of female actors were playing coy and then suddenly when an actor comes in so comfortable with her sexuality, how can you not sit up and take notice? Vipasha did try to mix things up a bit with films like Aparan and Corporate, but then fell back into her comfort zone with films like Boom 2 and Race. It's like if she was not sexy, she could not be anything else. Which is a bit over the hill, no? Our movie industry does not uh, acknowledge people who are above 30, frankly. Unless, you're, unless you transcend that and you become very big. And uh, Rift was never very big. She was always borderline big. She was always on the verge of breaking through but never did. So now that she's 35 plus, I mean, um, that, that, that's it. The end of the line as far as the indie movie industry is concerned. Bajna E. Hasino was a highlight in the latter part of her career, but from there on it all went downhill. She did try to change tracks and become the Scream Queen starring in less than average horror films like Atma, Creature 3D and Alone. Sadly, the only scary part about these films was that Bipasha had actually agreed to star in them. I think that there is an artistic film or a picture that doesn't make up. And there is no picture that the public is watching Bipasha. उसको ग्लैमरस, उसको एकदम हॉट ऐसे देखना चाहेगी हमारी ऑडियंस she has also lost her image as a sultry, bold actress. In a time when heroines are more open to the idea of showing intimacy on screen, Bipasha can no longer hold on to her niche. I am a hot hot auntie. So essentially, Bipasha went from debuting with the likes of Akshay Kumar to her last film starring TV actor Karan Singh Grover. Talk about the setback. It feels like Bollywood has moved on while Bipasha is still stuck in 2001. So what do you think is not working for Bipasha? Tweet to us at 9 the show or talk to us on facebook.com slash 9 xc Well, Bipasha, we hope you get your groove back. Now on to our next story. So a few days ago, Salman Khan's sentence in the 2002 hit and run case was suspended. As the whole drama unfolded, if you noticed, Salman did something special on all the days he had to make a court appearance. 9xc.com The Show has it that Salman believes white is his lucky colour. So hoping for something positive to happen, he has gone on to repeat the colour during his court appearances. He wore this shirt on May 6th. And again on May 8th, he wore white. Earlier he wore white on March 27th when he went to court for another appearance. Seems the colour is really working for him. And with that story, we've come to the end of this episode. Till I see you on Friday, keep yourself updated on all things Bollywood by visiting our site 9xe.com and our YouTube channel. Get in touch with us on 9xe the show and facebook.com slash 9xe. Get all the Bollywood news you want on the go by downloading the free 9xe app.